Well, I think it's time just to uh, do the introduction. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Um, this is our first online uh, seminar of the um, research group, which is called AQR, which uh, represents uh, quantitative regional analysis of the University of Barcelona. Um, we used to have, uh, let's say, our two uh, senior seminars per, per, per month, plus in addition, one or two um, PhD student seminars. And today we, uh, we have with us uh, Maximiliano Alvarez Contreras, who belongs to the University of um, Queensland in Brisbane. Um, Max, I met Max in uh, my stay in, 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 in Brisbane in, in a few months ago. And this, uh, it was a start to um, develop, uh, uh, as far as we know, the first meta-analysis on the labor market push and pull factors uh, in term of migration. And the paper is devoted to, to Spain. Um, we are glad that you are here. Uh, we invited uh, a list of, of course, our own uh, people, but also people in Brisbane and also people uh, who are strongly cited as, as uh, all the people who are around and who are connected. Thank you so much for being around and for being with us today. Um, well, the, the way we are going to, to develop the seminar is the following. Um, we agreed with Max that Okay, it's, it's fine if you, if you raise your hand and you stop the, the speaker in a normal seminar. But in an online seminar, we agree with him that what he will be have? more comfortable just to, um, to have his, his full speech. I will be collecting your questions, so you That's can wrong. write down your questions That's in a okay. chat or so just keep your questions to the end of the seminar. He will be speaking about 40, 45 minutes, something like that, and at the end, um, we will be able just to uh, launch our, our questions and, and comments. I ask you please to shut out your, to, to shut your, your microphone so we, we do not disturb Max as he, was, he is uh, uh, talking. And as I say, if you want to say something, I will be just to his contact. So please yeah, yeah, yeah. write whatever to the chat and, and that's it. Well, thank you so much, Max, for being with us today. Uh, this is the first online seminar, and we hope we, we will be there will be some more. Um, the floor is yours. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, all of you for joining this meeting. Uh, I also want to thank Abicente for organizing this and for giving me the opportunity to show our work. So our study consists of a meta-analysis of the labor uh, market push and pull factors on, uh, of internal migration in Spain. This work is currently under review in the Journal of Regional, um, uh, Regional Science and, and Urban Economics. So first, uh, to better understand the purpose of our, our research, I want to briefly summarize some theoretical background, at least the economic ones, which is the relevant to the factors where we analyze in this study. The neo neoclassical theory sees the migration decision as a form of human capital investment, where individuals compare all the net present values associated with each location including the, the current location, which is the, the origin. If the highest uh, net present value is attained in a region different from, from the origin, once taking into account all the, the, the moving costs, an individual decides to migrate. We are now, now going to see some of the proposed factors included in the numerator of this uh, net present value calculation. Sodaro, in 1969, pointed out that the net present value needed to be adjusted by the possibility of being unemployed, which is particularly relevant in the first period of job search in the new locations. So he suggested 
using the, re the region's unemployment rate to approximate the probability of being unemployed in some period. So the regional employment rate is one of, of the elements we are going to look at. Then for uh, the discussion of other early relevant proposed factors, at least for the understanding of internal in, interregional uh, migration flows, I want to mention two hypotheses. First, the disequilibrium hypothesis, which implies that we should observe migration flows from low to high wage regions, since the geographic variations in wages reflect opportunity, the opportunity for utility gain. Second, the equilibrium hypothesis implies that we might not observe uh, flows from low to high weight regions because the geographic variation in wages compensates other regional differentials, such as differences in natural amenities. For instance, regions with low natural amenities, such, such as bad weather or harsh landscapes, may compensate uh, inhabitants by paying uh, higher wages and or offering uh, cheaper housing. So the equilibrium perspective emphasizes the role of other factors, such as housing prices. In this paper, we focus on the labor market push and push factors. And why in Spain? First, because there is a significant number of works that have examined their responsiveness of internal in migration and, uh, to those factors. And the outcomes have been very diverse at the point that they have been labeled as enigma enigmatic. We will see that these are ideal conditions for performing a meta-analysis. On the other hand, the labor market in Spain has exhibited special features such as a high unemployment rate for over two decades, even, even more. With, uh, with, a lower, with a lowest of 8% in 2007 and the highest of, of 26% to, uh, to in 2013. The objectives of this study are first to obtain a consolidated estimate of the effects of each labor market factor on internal migration in Spain that benefits from all approaches undertaken to estimate the original effects. Second, to determine whether some studies attributes moderate the estimated effects, and in the case they do, to establish how the, the attributes moderate the estimated effects. A meta-regression analysis serves to meet these two aims. Now I will briefly explain uh, the methods and presenting the corresponding results step by step. A meta-analysis is a systematic review and assessment of empirical studies on a comparable topic. We use a comprehensive search method to collect as many studies that empirically estimate an effect of interest. Meta-analysis have been widely used in epidemiology, economics, psychology, environmental science, etc. And in terms of uh, migration, one meta-analysis reviews and assess the consequences of the net internal migration on regional economic growth. Osgen et al. in 2010 found that the effect of net internal migration on economic growth is positive and underscores the importance of controlling for unobserved regional heterogeneity using six effects. But no meta-analysis has examined the causes of internal migration. So in a meta-analysis, the input, in this case, the data or our sample, are the outputs of many empirical studies. In our case, we found 30 studies that dated from 1980 to 2019 including peer-reviewed journal articles and working papers that estimated the effects of at least one of the labor market push and pull factors. 
yielding the number of estimates given in this table, which gives the corresponding sample size for each labor market factor. So first, we can see that the researchers have been more concerned about the response of migration to, to the wages in the regions of destination. Of course, not all the, the estimates effects are readily comparable. For example, some studies estimate elasticities and other marginal propensities to mi migrate. So we converted all the estimates to a common effect size, a partial correlation, which is computed from the original t statistics and degrees of freedom according to the formula here. And for each partial correlation, we computed the respective standard error using this second formula. As I said earlier, our first objective was to obtain a consolidated effect of each uh, of our factors on internal migration. So our first natural candidate is a simple uh, mean of all partial, partial correlations. However, we also might prefer to give more weight to those estimates that are more precise. Then a commonly reported estimate is the fixed effect estimator, which is a weighted average of the, uh, where the weights are given by the reciprocal of the variance. The fixed if, uh, effect estimator assumes that all the original estimates are drawn from the same population with a common mean, such, as, such that the observed variation of the estimates is only due to sampling error. But we can still consider further heterogeneity. That is, we can consider that the true effect size that the original regressions attempt to estimate also comes from a distribution of population effects. An, estimation, an estimator that takes into account this further uh, source of variation is known as the random effect estimator. Uh, the following uh, table presents the, the results of the consolidated estimates of each of the labor market factors using simple average uh, fixed effects and random effects. All the estimates have uh, the three stars, so all are significantly different from zero at the 1% level. We can see that people behave in the conventionally expected way. People generally leave regions with lower wages and higher unemployment rates to relocate into regions with higher wages and lower unemployment rates. This is because the link uh, of migration outflows with unemployment is positive and with wages is negative. And also, for the case of migration inflow, the relationship is negative with unemployment and positive with wages. And the results are consistent across all the three estimators. We can also see that the coefficients are larger for the destination factors, suggesting more important role of the economic performance at the destination, particularly the wages. The last column, the Q, uh, shows the Q homogeneity test which is a test to decide whether to consider random or the fixed estimate, uh, estimator. In, the, in this case, the test suggests that uh, for the four factors, the original estimates are significantly heterogeneous. So we should consider the, the, the random uh, estimator, random effect estimator. A question we should ask as in any statistical analysis, is whether our sample of empirical findings is representative of the population of all possible effect sites. There are, there are at least three reasons to suspect that the sample of observed effects might not be representative. First, everybody, researchers, uh, reviewers, editors, tend to favor studies with a statistically significant result. Second, Reviewers and editors may have a predisposition towards accepting uh, works with results consistent with theoretical, theoretical presumptions. And third, 
the search for uh, of conventionally accepted results can influence the model specification. We can do a, a visual in inspection of publication uh, for publication bias by plotting a scatter plot of the effect size, which are measured along the horizontal axis, and the standard errors measured in descending order along the vertical axis. Thinking of the first cause of publication bias, we can expect a funnel shape where estimates concent concentrate in the top of in the top and dissipate in the bottom. This because more precise estimates don't require to be large in absolute value to become significantly uh, statistically significant. The dashed line denotes a 95% of uh, interval confidence interval around zero for a given standard error. So if a significant number of observations fall outside the 95% confidence interval, especially around the bottom, it's, a, it's an indication of publication bias. Our plot shows that the few estimates are found at the uh, in the bottom of the funnel but the, these estimer, estimates are generally the most dispersed, evidencing some uh, bias for pub publishing significant results. We also see a large dispersion around the top of the funnel plot, but this can be attributed to an excess of heterogeneity. And the evidence for, the causes, uh, for other causes of uh, publication bias like the preference for reporting outcomes consistent with the uh, conventional views, can be appreciated with the degree uh, of asymmetry of the plots. Our front funnel plots show that most of the estimates are inclined to the theoretical uh, expected side. We have already seen some evidence of heterogeneity in the estimated effects. Our next step is to systematically identify the sources of this heterogeneity. We do this by estimating a multivariate meta regression for each of the labor market factors. That is, estimating this equation here, where the Rs are the observed, observed partial correlations and the X are the regression features, which are our explanatory uh, variables. So here is a list of explanatory variables we, we, we have identified with their definition and their mean and standard deviation in the sample of each uh, labor market factor. We can see that most of them are dummy variables. Uh, many of them are commonly used in meta regressions, um, such as the variable article which takes the value of one if the estimation comes from a, a study published in a peer-reviewed uh, journal and zero otherwise. But in order to save time, I will briefly explain them when looking at the results. We estimate the meta-regression using weighted li listed squares where the weights are given by the variance of each partial correlation. Weighted listed squares are preferred to accommodate for heteroplasticity, which is usually present in meta-analysis in social science due to publication bias and excess of uh, heterogeneity. Another issue is that the observations might not be independent because most of the studies report more than one coefficient. So to make a consistent inference regarding the, the significance of the moderators uh, and their within a study dependence, we use cluster robust standard errors, which uh, where each study is used, as a, uh, is used as a cluster. So here are the results of the estimation of the meta regression for each uh, labor uh, market factor. Uh, I understand that, that there are a lot of small numbers. So in the following slide, I will be explaining what we found Grouping the, uh, grouping the variables in categories, and I will go category by category. So, so the first set of variables concerned with the uh, publication bias. 
This is actually a more formal statistical test of publication bias. The first variable is the standard error of the partial correlation. We found that less precise estimates of the effect of wages in origin are significantly more negative. Remember that higher wages in origin discourage odd migration. Well, this, this discouraging effect is bigger for less precise estimates. The second variable, article, significantly moderate the effect of the, of the factors in destination. We, we saw that the effect of unemployment uh, in destination is coerced in migration. So estimates from a studies published in, in peer-reviewed uh, journals showed a less discouraging role of unemployment. However, estimates from journals report a more relevant role of wages as it is in the destination, encouraging more immigration than estimates from working papers, for instance. The second group of variables is added to examine whether there are time trends in the estimated effect and also to see whether the time span covered in the original regressions affect their estimates. We can see that the effect of wages at the destinations has increased over time. And it is also larger in studies that cover more prolonged periods. The third category of variables relates to the types of data found in the empirical literature in Spain. In general, features of the data don't seem to moderate uh, the effect of the labor market factors significantly. We only found that the structure of the data matters, but only for the estimate of the wages at the destination. The estimated effects of the wages at the destinations are significantly lower when drawing on, on, drawing on panel data regressions than when relying on cross-section analysis, for instance. Our fourth set uh, of variables concerned with the diversity of measures of the relevant variable. For example, using net rather than gross migration exacerbates the effects of the labor market factors at the destination. And this is because when examining the impacts of net flows, both inflows and outflows vary in the spectrally, in spectrally opposite directions. So the sum results in a more substantial change in magnitude. On the other hand, some regressions use relative measures of unemployment and wages. That is, they use wages as the destinations relative to the wages at the origin. Others use the reverse ratio. And the same happens with unemployment. Using wages as the destination relative to the wages at the origin leads to a lower response of uh, the migration inflow. While using the ratio of wages at the origin uh, to the wages at the destinations give a less negative estimate. Finally, some studies use the, the region's GDP per capita instead of wages. Using GDP per capita finds less negative impact of the wages at their origin. Interestingly, the, the effect of the changes in unemployment in the region of destination is also moderated. This reflects the inter interdependence between wages or income and unemployment. The fifth set of variables regards some as econometric specifications. For example, to reduce potential simultaneity issues, since migration also affects the labor market factors, some studies use lacks of the relevant labor market uh, determinants in the original regressions. Our results reveal that lagging the labor market factors lead to a larger effect of wages in the destination and origin. Moreover, it is found that accounting for time invariant 
on several factor, uh, factors which help to reduce endogeneity and largest the effect of unemployment at the origin on migration. The following uh, group of regressors refers to other control variables added in the original regression. Since labor market factors are not the only determinants of internal migration. Unexpectedly, we found that only distance significantly moderates the effects of the labor market factors. In particular, adding the distance between regions first reduced the negative effect that unemployment in destination exerts over, over migration inflow, and second, increased both the potential of wages in the destinations on attract, attracting migrants and the influence of an, unemployment at their origin on encouraging emigration. Finally, we wanted to investigate whether the last Spanish crisis exerted an effect on people's decisions to migrate by changing the response to labor market differentials. And we found that despite having noticed earlier a positive, a positive uh, time trend in the effect of wages at the destination, people's responses to changes in wages at the destination was significantly lower during this period, but also that people didn't change their response to unemployment differentials. And to uh, uh, finalize, some concluding remarks are that based on all the empirical studies that have estimated the effect of labor market push and pull factors on interregional migration in Spain, we can conclude that people have responded in the conventionally expected way. That is, people tend to locate into regions with higher wages and lower unemployment. Then, the empirical literature of internal migration in Spain supports the disequilibrium hypothesis. It is worth not noting, though, that the wages of the, the origin were found to be susceptible to publication bias, and that the people was less responsive to the differences in wages between regions during the last Spanish crisis. Uh, well, that's all I wanted to share today. Uh, thank you for your attention. I'm happy to answer your questions. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Max. And now it's time for questions and comments. I give the word to Raul Ramos, who has uh, listed uh, several questions. So, Raul, if you can open your microphone or your and your camera, if you want, uh, I'm pretty sure Max will appreciate uh, listening to your questions. Okay, Vicente, thank you very much. Uh, I have several questions, as you were saying, but I'm only going to, to, to uh, propose a couple of them. Okay, I, I need some explanations on, on the details on the search strategy to locate these 30 papers. So I think that uh, it would be of great help just to know a bit how you have identified them. And then a second question would be related to the meta regressions and how uh, you have considered different types of fixed effects and something I miss is perhaps including now for fixed effects because I assume that the, these 30 papers have been produced by groups of authors that have published in a, let's say, recursive way on the same topic. Thank you. Okay. Um, so no, 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 you're asking in general. Regarding the, the 30 studies, uh, the way to collect them is to search um, for um, in a Google Scholar for all the keywords that um, that relates to the um, to these uh, topics, uh, to the labor market factors, the effect on, on internal migration. Um, I unfortunately I didn't uh, put the list here on on the on the presentation, um, but uh, one of them is the one here in the references, um, the one by uh, Muller. Uh, there are also papers from uh, Adolfo Massa uh, 
uh, many other authors. Uh, I think uh, Vicente is more familiar with the authors. Um, I don't know if you want to add something, uh, Vicente, on, on this. Well, yeah, uh, the thing is that we, we included papers and uh, working papers as well. So yeah. um, there are some of them are in uh, uh, journals uh, within the journal citation reports, while others are in, uh, in uh, mm -hmm. Spanish journals, let's say. So th there is a large diversity in the source, in mm -hmm. the source of, of, of papers. Uh, I think it's... Um, we, we, we take into account basically this in, in the, in the meta-aggression, I think, in one of the latest stages, when you include some of this um, uh, the type of publication, just looking at the publication bias effect, and then there is a significance. Yeah, the other thing, we, we included papers, uh, both in, uh, written in, in English and in Spanish. So actually, I, I, I will be like, very confident that we, we are not missing any any published paper on on the if on the that estimate the, the effects of uh, in, uh, labor market factors on internal migration. And on the, your second question, could you please repeat it because it was a bit. I think there were many things in the in the question. Uh, yes. To address. No, the second question was related to to the meta regression. Mm -hmm. And in case between these 30 papers, uh, there were some authors that have been publishing, applying the same methodology and the same strategy, but different uh, periods of time, so different levels of regional detail, which is another issue that would be interesting that you discuss, whether you have considered, uh, that all papers consider uh, not two regions or communities autonomous or if they move mm -hmm. to provinces. So we assume that there are some estimates that would be just replicating the same approach with different time periods, but, but I'm not sure, this was more or less my question. If this yeah. is the case, whether you have considered some out of six effects in the meta regression. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, I'm not, I got it, I got it. Um, so, for instance, the, in this, in this, in this table, the, the variable DM year, well, I, I, I didn't want to explain every uh, variable in detail just because of uh, time. Uh, but the, the variable DM year is uh, it's, it's computed like uh, mm, as the average year of the data used in the in the sample of the original study. So, for instance, if one study uh, the sample started uh, in in the year 1990 and finished in 2000, and the average will be around 1995. And that will be the the year of this paper. And also, we account for the fact that not all the paper cover the, the same uh, uh, period of time. So uh, the variable DM time span uh, reflects this: that the, some studies uh, cover ten years, other two years, other one year. The next variable, individual, is a dummy variable that is, um, takes the value of one when the papers use uh, individual data and zero if the data is aggregated. We took also into account the fact that some papers analyze migration between provinces and other papers between uh, autonomous uh, communities, that's the name, uh, autonomous regions. Um, and if the, the papers uh, examined uh, the, the provinces, the migration between provinces, the va this variable takes the value of one and zero if it doesn't. Well, the other that? features, uh, the net is, uh, I explained this in the, in the, in, in the presentation, uh, takes the value of one if they use net migration instead of uh, uh, gross migration. Uh, other features like other uh, controls that the original study uh, included are like uh, the house prices, which is uh, many papers, papers included, as, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, it can be is one of the relevant, relevant factors that people who uh, 
uh, follows the equilibrium hypothesis using plus. Uh, the equilibrium hypothesis they advocate for the use of uh, housing prices. Also, the distance variables, which has which is relevant for moderating the the, the labor for uh, market factors. And also demographic variables uh, like education. Some papers included education. Other papers uh, distinguish between uh, using the whole population. Others just focusing only on, on, on Spaniards. Only others only on on foreigners. So all these factors, if the paper of the regression took into account all these other uh, regressors. They have uh, in the meta regression the value of one and zero if they they didn't. Okay, thank you very much. And and we we didn't use uh, authors fixed effects. Yeah. Oh, yeah the author, this is this uh, is something we we could uh, consider just for. Yeah, yeah. So there are a couple of more variables that we could add, but yeah. Okay. Now. Um, Giuseppe CS, I don't know, sorry, who's, who's the surname of Giuseppe? Have you considered the quality of publications? I mean, whether the journal is highly ranked in the scientific rankings? No, um, no we didn't. We only, we created this binary variable, which is uh, one is, is published in a peer review with a uh, journal article, zero if, if it was a, a working paper. There are some uh, meta-analysis though that they used to separate. Uh, uh, they they do they, they used to take into account the, the quality of the of the journal by the impact factor. But yeah, we didn't. But it could be done that way too. It was you uh, Luis. Hello, Joseph Luis. Thank you. Thanks for your question. Um, um, okay, any other questions around? Please, comments. Adolfo, Adolfo, close. So please, um, uh, can you open your microphone and, and, and pose your question if you want? Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Vicente? Yeah, absolutely. Go. Oh, okay, okay. It's the first time I use this platform, so sorry if I'm doing something wrong. Okay. I mean, the, the first one I want to to say is that the, I think the idea of the paper is right. So the paper, uh, well, I know the author, so I, I'm i sure that the paper is also right, so congratulations, okay? Thank you. So I have some, only two, two close related questions, okay? Mm -hmm. um, how did you deal with non-linearities? Mm -hmm. I mean, when the original paper included non-linearities in these labor factors, mm -hmm. uh, well, I, I guess that you, you were merging these uh, coefficients and considering that this is only one paper. I don't know, I mean, but uh, this, is a, this is a good point I want to clarify. Mm -hmm. and, and the second one is, uh, is, well, it's basically the same idea, it's the same question, but uh, now I would like to know how, if you did it, how did you include papers in which wages and unemployment are mixed? I mean, I know that there are papers in which, uh, well, the author, instead of using both wages and unemployment, the author is using the expected wages as a, well, as a mix between these two labor factor variables. So obviously in this case, I don't know what you did, if, if you did something because uh, well, it sounds to be quite difficult to disentangle these effects. Okay, so this, uh, these are my questions. Thank you. Yeah. So, <clears throat> if you see in, the, um, in this regression, uh, for some of the factors, uh, I didn't, I mean, for, for some of the regressions of the labor market factors, I didn't include some of the variables because they, the, the number of observations was very, very low. Uh, mm -hmm. My cutoff was 10% of the observations. So if we see here, uh, some of the so the mean in a binary variable is the proportion of uh, observations with this uh, that has this category one. Or, so it is, it is higher if it is higher higher than 
0.9, that means that one of the categories is less than, than point, uh, yeah. 0.1, right? So with the two points that you uh, mentioned that the non-linearities um, and the expected wages, which is uh, that multiplies the, the, the wages by the unemployment rate, it's mm -hmm. something uh, it's really in, relatively new and not many papers have done it. So uh, that fell below the 10% cutoff. So we didn't create uh, the dummy variables that could be say one if, if this uh, include non-linearities, zero uh, is just linear or because yeah, I, I know that some papers they estimate uh, the effect of wages on, on, on internal migration, and this effect is depends on the on the difference of wages, um, the differential. Uh, so because it's, uh, there are few estimations uh, less than the ten percent that the, of each sample and of each factor, we then include and we are aware that can that can uh, generate some noise in the, in the estimations of the meta regression. Yes, yeah, it's some of the weaknesses. Okay, I understand. Okay. In, in any case, we, we did take into account these papers because in, in many in many of these papers there is a first regression in which there is no linearity or sorry, yeah. no, no interaction or or just the linear. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the, the, these were included. Okay. Yeah, they were yeah, yeah, included, yeah. but we didn't classify them, we didn't create a dummy for, for this, this issue. Uh, what, uh, sorry, what about distance? Because I, I can see here that you are including distance as a dummy variable, mm -hmm. but well, in some papers, you are trying to assess the factors behind short distance movements and in other papers, for example, the, the whole of Spain. I mean, are you considering only in this case papers at national level, I mean. Uh, yeah, we only consider models, uh, papers that model place-to-place -place migration, not the, the horror overall migration in Spain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know this internal migration in Spain, but I mean, uh, I mean for example, I, I remember some papers dealing with uh, migration between municipalities in Barcelona, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess that you are not including these papers into this analysis because if so, I mean, you are merging short distance, long distance movements and obviously the factors are different and I don't know if you... So, yeah, in here, um, so as you, as you see, the, the variable province take the value of uh, one if the study consider uh, the... Um, Migration between provinces and and zero if the the, the regressions consider the migration between uh, autonomous regions is the the name yeah yeah regions okay so yeah so for the papers we even include those that uh, were looking at the very short distance migration uh, within the same city or part of the same city like in Barcelona I know there was 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 one paper but we even in, there are many papers that look at the migration issues in, in Spain, but we didn't include them because, uh, yeah, it wasn't, it was, we decided that the scope of the paper will be this kind of uh, migration uh, at the, these levels. Uh, we dif differentiate if dividing the, the, the country in provinces uh, or in uh, autonomous regions. Uh, we wanted to check if uh, that make a, a difference, but not uh, for shorter distance migration. Okay, okay. Thank you for your answers and congratulations on your paper. Oh, thank you for your questions. Good questions, by the way. Oh, I cannot hear you, Vicente. Sorry, no, I was, I was waiting for additional questions, if there is any. Um, well, just one warning, we are recording this, so if you have no problem with that, um, we will upload it to, uh, to YouTube. If you had any problem or any trouble or you prefer not your comments not to be included, so email me please and 
and I will be happy just to cut the video at this time and, 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 and then to upload the rest. Um, any other issue? Okay, um, thank you so much for joining us today and uh, I hope we will have some other occasions in which uh, we will have time to meet both virtually and hopefully uh, very soon personally as well. Thank you so much. Have a good thank day. You. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye -bye.